Hey there, my name is Helper Wesley, and today I'll be talking about object types in GDevelop. We start off with a basic scene, and on the right hand side you'll see the objects that I've imported into the game. We're going to click on Add a New Object, and from here you're going to see all the options. We're going to begin though with the most commonly used object, which is a sprite, which we already have labeled in the scene as the player. Sprites are able to have different animations, where you add in each frame of the animation, pick the speed that the animation plays at, and decide whether or not it should loop. You can also label animations to make them easier to use later. To add more animations to a sprite, just click Add an Animation. Down here in the bottom left corner, you can edit the sprite's collision mask. You can also edit points that are on the sprite on the bottom left hand side as well. Every object can be given behaviors and effects. Behaviors are pre-built game logic that you can use to help make your game faster. So if we give the player character the platformer behavior, you can see there's a bunch of numbers in here that you can tweak, but you can leave those as default if you want to. And then if we give the player character the drop shadow effect, we get a character that has a drop shadow and one that can move when you press the arrow keys. A quick side note for the platformer behavior, if you don't give the ground that they're standing on, the platform behavior, then your character will just fall out of the screen. Speaking of the ground, let's move on to the next object, which is a tiled sprite. We use tiled sprites because if you grab a regular sprite and try to change its size, it will scale, whereas tiled sprites will duplicate instead of changing size. So you can use this for a bunch of different things, like level design and UI. The next object type is text. You can change the size, color, and font of this object, and then write in whatever you would like to to fill it in. And then you can use the event system to change what's written in this object during your game. Next up is the particle emitter. You can use the particle emitter for a whole range of things, but the two most important parts are particle kind, which come in point, line, and texture, texture being one that you can import yourself to create whatever kind of particle you want, and the number of particles in tank. If this is set to negative one, the particle emitter will stay there forever in your game. If it's set to a positive number, then it will use that many particles and then stop. You can either place them in scene to start when the scene starts, or use the event system to spawn them wherever you need them. Next is the nine patch panel sprite. You import an image, and then it's easiest to show you this from the wiki. You put the size of your margins into the nine patch panel sprite, and then it will expand in the way that you see on screen maintaining the ratios of the outside edges. And this can be used for dialog boxes, UI design, and a bunch of different things. The shape painter is also easiest to explain from the example in the wiki. Basically, this can be used to create a range of shapes for UI, waypoints, selection tools, and things like that. The text entry object is used to enter text. You create the object, put it in scene, and then using this simple event and the hello world text object that we made earlier, the game will record and display what I'm typing into my keyboard. Next is the BB text, which is very similar to the basic text object, but you're able to do more things with fonts and effects. If you don't need to use these effects, you're better off just using the basic text object. The light object can be used to create some dynamic shadows. I just create the object, place it in scene, and then give the player character the light obstacle behavior, and then you can see that the light is being obstructed by the player's collision mask that we set up earlier. The last object type, video, is pretty straightforward. You just pick the video's opacity, volume, and then import the video. It's best to use an MP4 for compatibility reasons, and then you can control the stopping and starting of the video through the event system. Each object type has a lot of options, and we'll showcase those in a future video. But for now, comment down below and tell us what kind of tutorials you think we should make next. I have been Helper Wesley, and I'm glad I could help.